Hi, and welcome to this episode of Linux in School. I am the educationist. My name is Nico Luhmann, and I am running this YouTube channel for making and keeping you up to date of what you can do to take Linux inside your classroom. Join me on my weekly live streams on Saturdays or Sundays. Subscribe and like so that you get up to date on when is the next live episode. During those episodes, I'll be sharing my best practice information about what to do with and how to integrate education authentically into your teaching. So that is more pedagogical than technological. Now, my Linux in School uh, series is more dedicated of me showing on what types of apps and software I am using here um, with my students uh, or what I have used for the past 10 years. Today, we're going to be looking at what are our choices when using image manipulation, paint and graphics programs. Now, of course, when you are migrating from a Mac or Windows environment, your first question would be, what kind of software should I use? Well, the number one thing is, as always, is to check whether your favorite software is already in Linux. If it is, you're lucky and just continue using the one that you already know. Or if it's not, then we will dig deep and find the best alternative for you. Now, the way I look at which software, which app should I choose for myself is that I use the technology integration matrix. I use the matrix in order for me to be able to make an educated decision so that I can verify that students use technology tools to collaborate with others rather than working individually at all times. I will look at that they use those tools to connect new information to their prior knowledge rather than passively receive information. And I look that you, students will use technology tools to link the learning activities. So what about those graphics and image manipulation? I have three examples that I've used uh, with primary age students from age 5 to 12. And they are TuxPaint, Krita, and Gimp. Now, TuxPaint is my all-time favorite tool that I keep on using whenever I need to teach paint and how to make sure that the kids are learning the proper use of their peripherals like mouse and keyboard. Krita is a professional open source painting program and this tool is amazing. Um, I am a mere beginner with this uh, app and oh boy, it is just great, especially when using with a Wacom tablet, for instance. And then the grand old man or the grand old piece of software over 25 years old now, the GIMP, which is a, if you are a graphic designer, photographer, illustrator, scientist, GIMP gets you uh, animations and whatnot. It is something uh, which you can also use if you are learning to do computer software and uh, you want to create your own plugins and whatnot. It is amazing. So um, what about students? So when would we take, for instance, Tux Paint? So the Tux Paint is the first choice. Um, with Tux Paint, I start off, that usually is, excuse me, the first piece of software that I use with my students. Um, then I introduce GIMP and then the final one is Krita. So those are kind of like goes from 
I would say from a five-year-olds up to um, eight-year-old up and then a uh, ten-year-old and up and that is what my idea of using these my favorite apps okay let's go over to my Ubuntu 2010 groovy gorilla and look at how to use these programs and what they look like um, number one thing after you've installed tux paint is to just make sure that your configuration is ready so here is tux paint config and i just like to go and see uh, that i'm using full screen native um, and um, I take the sound effects off, but I leave them on now for um, to show. But if you have multiple desk desktop computers in your classroom, you definitely want to disable the sound effects. Um, saving, I would use a alternative save directory because that will just hide where um, all these um, uh, your files will go um, and so forth and you can also simplify the interface but I'm just going to now um, show you ah permission deny I have to open it as because I would be for the current user only so let's see what happens when we and that's what I mean with the sounds so right now I can already see that we have a problem let's try one more time did I so I have to try that configuration <laughs> one more time since I am using this on virtual environment and sometimes the graphics driver isn't up to the ah here we go so it is amazing here we have tools they are big uh, students are able to go and click on their stamps it shows you kind of like almost like an onion skinning of what kinds of and and this way you are able to quickly create quickly create images we can teach the importance of size oh that was way off there we go and we have also undo so basically it teaches through play so we can use this to create many different types of images but it allows us to teaches the student to use the computer as well and all to erase or undo the way we want to go 
Um, so that's why Tux Paint, by far, my favorite uh, tool oh. of all times. And... Le, le, le. Oh, I don't want to print. Le, le, le. The second program is uh, the... The second program, of course, is GIMP. Le, le, le. Yes, I'm done. Now, GIMP is an image manipulation uh, program. So this allows us to create uh, a versatile... Uh, this is kind of like the Photoshop uh, replacement. Um, which allows us to then create new from template and it allows us to um, work on on various different types of um, platforms um, export function is in here so a um, couple of things. Uh, first of all, what GIMP will do is that it uh, will save everything in its own file uh, format. And when you want to uh, share your or when your uh, when your image is ready, um, then you need to export it as a JPEG or PNG or a GIF, uh, re um, and and that is just one step that you need to teach to your students. Um, it also um, supports layers, it supports um, filters, um, so these plugins will make um, a life so much more easier for you and uh, allows you to work on creating titles, creating banners, creating all different kinds of um, illustrations if you want. You can also take pictures and work on your pictures um, here as well. So this is by far, as I said, my uh, favorite tool um, to do with students. And then um, is Krita. And this is something that I have just started to learn. And you have the user manual, which you definitely need. You need to um, get in and starting to um, getting started is something that you want to look into um, just so that the learning curve is there. Um, what do you want to um, create and how are you creating. So how do you get the new document? How do you work with brushes? Just look at that uh, selection of choice that you have. Um, and overall, I think that this is just a magnificent um, tool uh, with layers, with masks, with templates. You have auto save, you can back up. This is something amazing. Um, this is something also um, great because you have templates like this animation. So if you have students who are into anime, this is um, a no brainer for you to introduce and let the, let's get them be as creative as you want. So thank you uh, for joining on me on this my favorite apps in my linux in school series um follow me on twitter pyp with nico or on and make sure that you uh comment if you have any questions if you have any suggestions about the content you would like to see um in this series just leave it to me um or if you think that these are helpful let me know uh, subscribe hit that bell and be notified whenever i go live or when a new episode in my series is coming out i'll see you in the next one